Welcome to episode three of the Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build an online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Honored to have some time with you today. We're going to talk about multiple streams of income, and we're going to talk about the risk of not starting an online business. I'm all about you building an online business and creating not only location freedom, but time freedom, creating the flexibility that you want in your life to do the things that are important to you, and also to be able to create uh, and build things that you care about and do work that you really are excited about. Um, That's a huge part of why I like having a business because I get to do the things I'm excited about doing. But it's scary. It's scary to start something. And maybe you're thinking, yeah, I would love to have an online business, Graham. That sounds great. Uh, and I I love the idea of passive income. I listened to episode two, the four pillars of passive income. So that's a little hint. You should go listen to that. But you're excited. You like the idea, but you haven't done it. You haven't started one. I get it. You're busy. I get it. You have responsibilities. I get it. Um, It takes that massive amount of energy and momentum to break that coefficient of friction. I paid attention to ninth grade science class or whatever it was, right? The coefficient of friction uh, that energy takes to get the ball moving or that rock or that boulder moving. It takes so much more energy to just get it moving than it does to keep it rolling. So I get it. It's hard to get that inertia going. But let's talk about what happens if you if you don't start your online business this year. You let another year go by. Because um, I don't want that to happen. Let's talk about the risk of you not starting it. That's what I want to talk about in this episode. I want to break down the risk because there is a risk. And I've heard other people say it's risky to start a business. Okay, well, we'll get into that. It, the short answer is it's riskier not to start a business. But let's break down why it's risky to not have your online business. And let's break down what this can look like to have multiple streams of income. First thing I'm going to say to you is if you are in a nine to five or you have a job, don't quit your day job. Please, please don't quit it. At least not right now. Okay. You don't want to quit your day job. If you want to do this thing the smartest way possible, then you need your day job. Your day job is a good thing, okay? I I don't want anyone to hear me saying that I hate jobs, okay? I'm grateful for the jobs that I've had, and I'm grateful for the people that work at jobs. I have people that work for me. I give them a job. If it weren't for businesses, we wouldn't have jobs, and businesses need jobs. I mean, they, they, they need each other. So having a job is not a bad thing. Having a day job is a really, really big blessing. I just don't want you to stay in that day job forever if it's not the right fit for you. If you're feeling that itch to do something either unique or something that you care about or you really need to buy back some of your time. And it's going to be really hard to do that in a day job. But let's think about why your day job is something you don't want to quit right now. Okay? One, it gives you income to live. What about that? You need to pay bills, I need to pay bills. So your day job is already solving that problem, giving you income to live. And what this does as you start an online business, which you should, uh, and it's easier than you think, having this income of your your day job creates a no-pressure environment. It's a no-pressure environment. Um, When there's no pressure for your online business to do well, you can actually do smart stuff in your business. The dumbest things I've ever done in my business are when I felt pressure to do them. The dumbest things I've ever seen other people do in their business is when they have the pressure. I need to make money. I need to make a certain amount this month. It has to happen. When you have that pressure, you do dumb things. When you have a little bit of freedom, you can not just do the thing that will maybe immediately make you money, but you can do the thing that's a little bit more strategic long-term. Sometimes those are the same things. And sometimes some pressure is a good thing. I mean, I lost my job in a recession. I had a lot of pressure to perform. I didn't have the luxury of a day job. Um, 
but it, it was painful for 18 months. And I don't want you to go through that. Had I had a choice in the matter, I would have kept the day job. And if I had someone like me whispering in my ear, I would have started the online business on the side. So I would have a no pressure environment in which to start my business. Okay. Give having the day job, excuse me, gives you freedom to build what you want to build or take on the clients you want to take. If you have a service-based business, Let, let's say if you're a service-based business or you want to do that online, um, you don't want to be pressured into taking every client. And if you sell products, you don't want to feel pressure into selling to everybody because guess what? Not everyone should be buying from you. Not everyone's a good fit. Not everyone's the target for what you do. You write bad sales copy when you feel like everybody needs to buy this thing. They don't. The right people need to buy. Your stuff shouldn't be for everyone. So again, when you have that pressure gone, you're able to have the freedom to work with who you want to work with and sell to who you want to sell to. Uh, and then what it gives you is time. It gives you time to build up a healthy business. Okay? Everyone and their mom right now is telling you that you can make money online. And, and I know that, and that, that's the risk I take from, from jumping on a podcast, coming on YouTube, getting out in front of people on Instagram and saying, I want to help you start an online business because I could easily fall into the noise of everybody else who's saying like, you can make money online. It's easy. Make money online. It's easy. Nothing in life is that easy. It's simple. There's a process. Look, I'm not the most intelligent marketer in the world. I'm not the most intelligent business owner in the world. And I was able to figure this thing out. Okay. I'm slower than most. A lot of people I've met have done it a lot faster than me. I'll give them that. But I figured it out over time. If I can figure this out, you can too. But just because it's trendy and there's a lot of people just trying to sell you stuff based on your dream of wanting to have an online business doesn't mean that it's not true. Doesn't mean that it's not a great thing to have. It's just, I don't want you to be a flash in the pan. I don't want you to make money in 30 days just for the sake of making money in 30 days. I want you to build a robust business that's healthy that will actually be around for a long time. I've been running my online business for 10 years. Coming up on 10 years. It's a long time. That's an actual business. Making money for six month period of time, that's more like a gig, which is fine if that's the beginning of multiple gigs or a string of success or building equity with people over time so that you actually are a brand that people know and like and trust and you have customers for many, many years. That's a real business, right? That's what I want you to build. Okay. So the big takeaway at the beginning here, this is a giant preface to say, as much as I'm your cheerleader and I want you to start an online business, I don't want you to quit your day job right now. You're not ready. There might be a time when you're going to be ready. And there will come a time here, but not right now. Don't quit it on day one. Now, let's talk about the risk. Again, I always heard and agreed with the idea that like most businesses are going to fail. Nine out of 10 businesses are going to fail. Whatever the magical statistic is that they make up. The point being... If you're going to start a business, just know that you're probably going to fail, which is really encouraging, by the way. No wonder people don't want to start a business. And so I wasn't interested in business. I was interested in getting steady, predictable income, aka a paycheck. Okay. What I have found, because I have both lost jobs and been let go of jobs, one due to recession, one due to the company no longer needing an entire department. I have learned that having one income stream, aka your paycheck, your day job, is the risky thing. Job or business, in a way. But having just a day job, that's what's risky. It's riskier to just keep your day job and not start this online business because what you're doing is banking your life on someone else even if that someone else is dependable, you're still banking your life on one income stream. And, every, and everything is fine as long as income is streaming in, flowing in. And some employers are more riskier than others and some are less risky than others, right? My brother works for the government. He's in the military, right? That's The, the government, American government's a very dependable employer until they shut down the government 
I mean, it doesn't happen that often and doesn't happen that long typically, but goodness gracious, the one in 2019, this that was a super long government shutdown. A lot of people, their paychecks disappeared overnight. So again, anytime you have one income stream, a few things happen. One, you have fewer choices, okay? Fewer choices. You have to have that income stream. You're dependent on it. There's no flexibility. Yeah, you have to be all in on that stream, even if you don't like it, even if it's drying up a little bit. That's the only lifeline you have. Two, there's more fear and uncertainty. Is the business that you work for doing well? The company that you work for, are they doing well? Maybe they're in a good season, but maybe they go into a bad season. A lot of people lost jobs during the big uh, financial crisis, the big recession in 09, 08, 09, because there was a lot of businesses that were propped up by a lot of debt and a lot of stupid decisions. And there was ripple effects. It was a little more complex than that. But the point is, is the unstable businesses fell apart and they were good companies making lots of money. Just one day to the next, the money dries up. And if the money dries up for them, then guess what? They can't pay you. Um, when you've got one income stream, the odds are against you. Again, you're, and a lot of people, they know this now. This might not be new news to you since that recession, since it was so deep and cut so hard in people's lives and the psyche of America. Uh, people are less trusting of their day job. You know, we're, we're decades removed from that steady, you know, 40 year career at one company. That's very rare these days. And so we're already a little skeptical of that. And cynical is the better word, right? Of being at a company for a long time. Pensions went away. Longevity has gone away. There's, uh, there's age discrimination. There, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, so the idea that like, hey, I'm at a good company. I do good work. I should be able to have a job for a long, long time. You can't bank on that. And we know that. So the odds are stacked against us. You're more likely to lose a job than to have a good job at one company for 30, 40 years. And then one other bummer about having one income stream is there's less income potential. Your income is limited to whatever they pay you. So really what that means, your income is limited to how good of a negotiator you are. Because the people that get paid more, um, typically they negotiate. A, the best time to negotiate your salary is when you're getting hired. And that's when a lot of people miss an opportunity, by the way. They just take whatever they're offered. But you have the most leverage when you're getting hired to get the pay that you want and deserve. And then uh, people, they don't get raises and they're afraid to ask their boss for raises and they're afraid to negotiate. Um, so basically, the people that are a little more assertive tend to get paid more because they are willing to ask for it. And they're willing to say, no, that's not good enough. Or they're willing to interview and get a job offer somewhere else and pit multiple offers against each other. That That's how, I mean, you use that as leverage to get a raise. Unless you're good at negotiating or you have a really generous employer who's just really just kicking butt and, 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 and giving people raises above COLA, right? Cost of living adjustments. Um, then you're really limited, your income. Some some industries, obviously, you have a lot more income potential, earning income potential than others, um, but still there's going to be a ceiling, which is fine. We don't need to always make more because guess what? Making more money doesn't make you happier. I have figured that out. But it's nice to have more money. There's a lot of good stuff you can do with it, like pay off debt or heck, just give it all away to somebody and bless somebody else. So I'm a fan of having more because then you have choice. And when you want income stream, you're limited. So let's talk about the less risky approach. You cool with that? The less risky approach is to have multiple streams of income. It's to make your living from not just one income stream flowing in, but multiple, two or more income streams. Right? If you think about this, the wealthiest of wealthy do this. Even, even CEOs of, of businesses don't just make their money in one place if they're smart. A lot of them have, you know, they get a paycheck, they get a salary from the business they created, they have stock options in their business. But you know what a lot of wealthy people do once they have some money, if they're smart, is they diversify and they they buy income producing assets. That's one way you could buy real estate, rental real estate, right? That you get paid uh, a rent every single month, plus the income is appreciating and up going up in value. Um, they buy other businesses. Uh, 
you you can you and I can invest in businesses just by buying stock. That's what the stock market is. It's creating multiple streams of income. Instead of just banking on your one income stream, I'm going to take money I have and buy stock or shares of another company. So as it grows and pays dividends, I get an income stream. That's smart. But the best income stream that you could add to your day job is an online business. The power of, again, having an online business and having multiple streams of income is there's a few things. One, you have the power to choose the work that you want. So maybe you have a good job. I know many of you have friends that have a really good job, good paying job, and they're grateful for it, but it's not the work that they really love. And that's a hard That's a hard spot to be in because you realize that you're really blessed to get paid what you're paid, but you don't like what you do. That's a, that's a tough spot. If you hate what you do and you're not getting paid much, it's almost a no-brainer. You should just start a business, but then you're scared, and, and I get that. But at least you know what you're supposed to do. It's almost harder when you get paid well for something you don't like to do because, <laughs> you know, especially if you're responsible and you have a family, you're like, you know, I want to provide. I don't want to just jeopardize this income stream, and I get that. That's why you shouldn't quit. You should start a second income stream alongside. But if you start the second income stream, you have this online business, Right? Now you can choose work that you want. You can, A, do work that you like. B, work with the people you want to work with or don't. Maybe you don't want to work with people. That's fine. Um, You can do stuff that you care about. I was talking to a bunch of people on Facebook and I asked them, what's the number one reason why you want to start a business? Open-ended question. Some people said, I'd like to make more money. Um, A lot of people said, I'd like to have flexible hours, right? And be able to, to take half days or pick up my kids from school or take them to school and not have to have, you know, childcare in the mornings or the afternoons, um, whatever, more vacation days. That's a very, very big answer. Another one though is I don't believe in the work I do. I'm good at what I do. I might even get paid well. I just, I wake up and I feel like it's relatively pointless. Maybe that's you. When you, when you start an online business, even if you keep the day job, you feel like over here on the other side, this is something I genuinely care about. This is something that I get excited to wake up and do. Even if I can only do it for an hour a day, I'm excited about this. Even if it's 30 minutes a day, I'm chipping away at this thing I really believe in. And it's amazing what that will do for your psyche. It's amazing what that will do even if it's not making you any money yet. My first business, The Recording Revolution, for the first six months made no money. I was just pumping out content, like three pieces of content a week. Um, And it made no money, super insecure about what I was doing. But you know what? There was still a big payoff in the satisfaction that I got of creating a video writing an article, sending an email to somebody that it actually, light bulb went off for them, uh, it encouraged them, it gave them an action plan to take, it got them results, and I would get some feedback, like, oh my gosh, this was so helpful. There was so much satisfaction in knowing that I'm spending time creating something that I believe in, and then it's connecting with another human being, and they're getting value out of it. Even though there's no money being exchanged yet, it still was valuable to me fired me up. And that's good for your psyche. That was the only thing I had, by the way, to go on because I wasn't making any money at the time. And even when I started to make some money, it was so little. And I was so clueless at what I was even doing. Is this even possible? Now I know it's possible. So when I help you, even if you're not making money, I can be the voice in your ear saying, look, you, this is possible. Here's the model. Here's how to do it. Uh, Here's what you can expect. Okay, I didn't have that. So it was really scary. But at the very least, I had the satisfaction of doing work I really loved. Um, when you have multiple streams of income, the odds are in your favor, right? When you have just your one stream of income, your day job, the odds are stacked against you, right? Chances are you're going to lose that job at some point. Or chances are you're going to get sick and can't work. That's why a lot of people have disability insurance, right? If you can't work, how are you going to make money? So the odds are stacked against you if that's your one income stream. If you have multiple income streams, especially if one is passive or like I like to say, automatic income, the odds are in your favor. Because then one, you lose your day job. Well, guess what? You still have an income stream over here. And maybe it's in its infancy and it's not 
fully replacing your day job, but hey, having an extra income stream when you lose a job is better than having nothing, okay? B, you know, you've doubled, if you just have two income streams, let's say you've doubled your chance of success. It's like a horse race and you own two horses. Instead of owning one and hoping that your horse wins, you own two. One, and you know, one of them could be the winner, the other could be the winner, or they could both win in this weird hypothetical, they could tie, <laughs> right? In this mythical hypothetical horse race. So you just, the odds are in your favor. The more income streams you have, the odds are even more in your favor. Very much like investing. You know, when you study investing, they teach you diversify, diversify, diversify. Own not only multiple investments, because some may fail. If you're going to buy companies, don't just buy Coke, because Coca-Cola might fail. Buy Coke and Pepsi. So whichever one dukes it out in the end and wins, you own both. So that you win, because you own it all. Right? So diversify the companies you buy. And not only that, diversify the asset classes. I'm sorry, you didn't sign up for a personal finance lesson today. But they tell you don't just buy stocks. Buy bonds. Buy real estate private lending, own your own business. These are all, you know, some people, commodities like, you know, gold, oil. Uh, you're, you're, you're diversifying, creating multiple income streams in case one doesn't work. Or maybe four of the five work, or maybe only one of the five works. Either way, you're hedging your bets. The odds are more in your favor when you have multiple income streams. And then the other benefit, obviously, of having an online business and having multiple income streams, either just your day job and your online business, or multiple components to your online business or multiple online businesses is that you have more income potential. You know, let's say your day job is a fixed amount of money that they're going to pay you. Even if you're at the top of your class, you, there's like a, a limit, a ceiling to whatever they'll pay you. If you own your own business over here, there's really no ceiling. Give or take, there's no ceiling. And that is wonderfully satisfying because I think all of us want to be rewarded for hard work, right? We, we know that there's slackers out there. Hey, and I've been a slacker in previous jobs. I, I know it. I, again, I worked for a software company and I did the bare minimum. I showed up right at nine o'clock. I left right at five o'clock. Like I was looking at the clock and as soon as it said four fifty nine, five five o'clock, grab my coat, run. Okay. I did what was asked of me. I did a good job, but I did not go above and beyond. I just was doing the bare minimum. And guess what? I was never really promoted. Okay. That's lazy. Don't do the bare minimum in life in general. Don't be like Graham in the past. But we all know those people though that maybe you work with and they're doing the bare minimum and they're getting paid almost what you're getting paid. And maybe you're you're busting your butt for your boss. Maybe you're going above and beyond and and hopefully you're getting rewarded because Diligence is rewarded anywhere, but when you work for somebody else, sometimes that's there's a limit to that. When you work for yourself, there's no limit. You're you're rewarded for your work. If you serve more people, you get paid more. If you serve people better, you get paid more. If you're smart and you automate a lot of your business so that you're able to reach and scale to more people and serve them exactly what they want, even when you're not working, you can get rewarded. You can have that, like episode two, we're talking about passive income, disproportionate, scalable income off of a fixed amount of work. You can be rewarded for your efforts. And I think that's a human thing. I think all humans want to be rewarded for their effort. And I think all humans should be rewarded for their effort. And if you're blessed enough to live in a country and in a system that allows your efforts to be rewarded, you have a free market society where you're allowed to start a business and a, a business is, the businesses that thrive are the ones that actually serve customers well. And newsflash, that's the only way to stay in business a long, long time is to serve people well. And businesses that don't serve people well eventually close down because people take their money elsewhere because they have choice and freedom to buy what they want to buy from whom they want to buy. If you're blessed to live in that kind of system like I do in America, then you, my friend, are going to love starting a business because you're going to get rewarded for your effort. And it's a satisfying thing. And your income can grow and grow and grow. And it should. I think your income should grow if you serve more people. That's, sorry, I have some political thoughts there. 
I'm not going to go there today. Today. We'll go there, I'm sure. So let's talk about if you're in the one income stream, if you if you have, again, just a day job, you're in a risky position. You just, you just are. And I'm not trying to scare you. If you ha- I mean, if you've been laid off, you know. So I'm preaching to the choir. If you haven't lost a job, if you haven't lived through a recession, if you haven't had to move because of a family issue and it was hard to find a comparable job that paid you what you pay, were paid before, um, then, then you need to hear this. It's very risky what you're doing, having just a job. Very risky. It's a far less riskier to start an online business. Far less risky. And what I would say to you is this is the year to start. This is the year to start. Um, because you don't have to give up everything to start this thing. This isn't like it was 10, well, even 10 years ago you could do this, but 20 years ago, you know? When I was in high school, let's let's just say like you're in the nine, 1990s like and before, it was really hard to start a business. It cost money. It, it took a lot of risk. Um, you really had to know what you were doing. And it took a lot of, inertia and momentum at the beginning. Now with an online business, you can ease your way into it. You can start to develop your voice, figure out who you're going to serve, how you're going to serve them. You don't even have to have a product yet. You can start with content, which is pillar number one of passive income and online business is great content. And you don't know what's great until you start. You start to connect with people. You start to serve them. You start to engage with an audience online. You know, you start with social media and then you create a blog or a podcast like this or a video like this and you you just, you surf. You, you, you figure out what connects with people, what, what people like. You answer questions. You, you, you raise your hand virtually online and say, hey, I have something to offer you and I want to offer it to you for free. That's how you start. That costs zero dollars. Zero dollars to get started on social media. If you want to have your own website, you can get hosting. I've I've got it as cheap as three dollars a month at places like GoDaddy. I don't know what it's right now. Economy hosting could under ten bucks a month. You can get the hosting you need, build a free website, and you're just paying. You buy a domain, ten bucks maybe. So maybe you pay ten bucks for a URL like youraweawesomebusiness.com. Maybe you're paying ten bucks a month for your hosting. You can get a free WordPress template or something like that, install your site, or you can use Squarespace for the free trial and you just pay them monthly to host it and all that stuff. We're talking sub $50, sub $30 to create your own custom private online presence that maybe you direct people to. You can start building an email list for free with a tool like MailChimp. I mean... I started my business with $50 10 years ago. You can do it for far less today. And so you're not out any money. And if anything, you're out 10, 20, 30 bucks. And then you start to create content and see what works and see what you like and see where there's a gap in the marketplace and see where people are being underserved. That That's freedom to try it out. You're not out any money. You're just out your time. But if it's something you love, it's something you care about, it's a fun project. Again, you do it on the side. And that allows you to leverage time. You got your day job, your one income stream. Now you're starting to tease this out. Once you start to build it out, you get your digital products running, you start to make some sales. Then you can start to figure out in your conversion rates and figure out, look, if I'm getting this amount of people on my email list every month and I'm making these number of sales through my email funnel, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to episode two. Then you can calculate if I could get more people to hear about me, I could sell more of my product. You can kind of predict what your revenue will be. Now, getting a bigger audience, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but a lot of it, the bulk of it relates to content and strategically creating content that gets ranked on YouTube, content that gets shared more on uh, uh on your blog or whatever, when people are sharing on social, figuring out what kind of podcast episodes people want, connecting with other people, collaborating, getting in front of other people's audiences. Then it becomes a game of just when that income hits that threshold that you're willing to make the leap. This is, there's no risk in that at all. Now, again, if you're thinking, 
Graham, I don't want to start an online business until I know I'm going to make a certain amount of money. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, that's, that's, then, then you're kind of out of luck. If you're not willing to put in the work to build an audience, and the audience is everything. I, I always say, without an audience, an online audience, nothing's possible. Absolutely nothing. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how amazing your product is or service or what you've invented or how hard you're going to work. Without an audience, nothing is possible. But with an audience, anything is possible. And I mean anything. With an audience, you can sell products to. You can you can get sponsored. Do you know how many people email me every week wanting to pay me to mention their products on YouTube? I could probably make a living just off of that. And plenty of YouTubers do. If you have a big podcast, what do the biggest podcasts do? They get sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by blah, 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 blah. Sponsorship. They're getting paid to pitch someone else's product because why? Not because they have a great show, but because they have an audience. They have people's attention. Okay? That's what brands are looking for. They're looking for an audience. And so if you create content and build an audience, then you become valuable either to someone else or to yourself because then you can sell your own products, which is what I would recommend. Have your own products and services. The margins are much better. <laughs> um, you can charge premium prices, the right prices. Uh, you can serve your clients the best way possible. You can give your customers exactly what they want instead of like trying to match them up with somebody else. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just telling you the way I like to do it. So that takes work though, man, because you can't build an audience overnight. You can try to buy an audience overnight with Facebook ads. That's what everyone's trying to do, by the way, but it's just, it just doesn't work. It's not going to bring the right clientele. You, you haven't built any trust. They don't know you or like you or trust you. They just saw an ad. And you might be able to sell something to them. And yes, those, those people might be a perfect fit and they might stick around forever. I'm not saying that it, it doesn't work. I'm just saying it doesn't scale very well, especially if you have no audience at the beginning. So don't be like a lot of people who say, I love the concept of an online business, but I don't want to work for it. I just want to get the right Facebook ad algorithm and you know, make a course over the weekend that's hodgepodge together and repurposed stuff that I learned from somebody else and then make it automatic and make money. That's crap. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do, yeah, I want you to make money. Yeah, I want you to have a passive income. I'm a big fan of it myself. But you know what though? I want you to build an audience that that you serve and that feels served by you and that will then do anything for you. I did a video on YouTube talking about Kevin Kelly's thousand true fan, fan concept, not fan. And the whole idea is he was talking, this is back in 2008 when he wrote this article. He's the editor-in-chief of Wired Magazine. And he was talking about, you know, you don't need a million followers to make a living as a creative or as an artist or as a freelancer, or as a, online, a business owner, you don't need a million followers. You don't need a ton of people. You just need a thousand super fans. He calls them true fans. Um, if you have a thousand people that they're the kind of fans that will buy anything you sell, you know, like if you're a musician, these are the fans that will buy your album. They'll, they'll stream it on Spotify, but they'll also buy it on iTunes and they'll also buy the vinyl, even though they don't have a record player. You know, they're the people that want to support you. They love what you do. You need a thousand of those people. And that's not, that's not easy to create, but it's easier than you think. You get a thousand of them to pay you a hundred dollars a year for something, either a product or they're subscribing to something for eight bucks a month. It's cheaper than Netflix, right? A hundred dollars a year, thousand super fans, and you can sell to them directly. That's a hundred thousand dollars a year. As a solopreneur, you're making six figures. That's a great living. Okay. So the point is, the power is having the fans. That's where the power is. That's what fuels your online business is having the audience of, of super fans. That is more valuable than any course, any membership, any Facebook ad campaign, 
And it's not that having courses are bad or memberships, I have both. It's not that Facebook ads are bad. It's just that the key is building an audience and that's what takes work. So this is the year I want you to start an online business if you haven't already. If you have a day job, don't quit it just yet. Leverage it to give you the freedom, flexibility, and income so that you're free to in your spare time and you need to carve out time, build up this second income stream, which means you got to build an audience to then offer amazing stuff too. If you do that, it's not going to take you that long to build a really, really loyal audience. Even if you only have a few people to sell to, there's going to be people, you'll be surprised when you, when you build that trust with them and then you offer something, it could be private coaching. It could be a membership. It could be a course people are going to want to buy from you. And then you're going to realize, wow, I just need more of these super fans. How do you get those super fans? Serve more people. Be generous with free content. Commit to the long game. And pretty soon, you'll be able to build the second income stream that will make as much money as your day job, if not more. Then you can quit if you want. And then you'll want to leverage that online business to have maybe multiple streams of income within that business. Or some people, I know, I have friends that just, they keep their day job. They like what they do for a living, but they just want the flexibility of having more income on the side. Or maybe they reduce their hours. And that's fine too. So the point is, yes, it seems risky to start an online business or any business, but no, it's not really risky. And you know what's risky is not starting an online business banking your whole family's livelihood on your job, your day job, that you aren't in control of, no matter how good you are or how faithful you are. I just think that there are better ways to make a living. And if you have any inkling, any desire to have an online business, it takes time to get them up and running. So please start yesterday. And if you can't start yesterday, then start today. And if you're unsure of how to start, I've put something together for you because I, I, I know I, I, I talk about this stuff a lot and sometimes it, you get pieces of it and it's hard to, to connect all the dots together. What I did is a little while back, I, I filmed uh, an online workshop. Okay, This workshop's called How to Earn Your First $1,000 a Month of Passive Income in Just 30 Minutes a Day. Okay, It's called that for a reason because it's very, very possible. And so what I want you to do is watch it. I want you to be able to join me on this workshop for free. It's a recording. I already taught it, right? But I want you to be able to access this for free. What it's going to walk you through are the four components that you need to create passive income. It's going to teach you a step-by-step -step system to have what I call an automated money machine. Literally what I do day one, day two, day three, when people find me and they're, they're coming into my system, it teaches you how to sell and who the best people are to sell to. Inside this workshop, it teaches you also the biggest mistake people are making with their online businesses when they're creating their digital products. I talked about a little bit about this in episode two of the show of how everyone wants to jump to the product first, which is one of the pillars of passive income. And I get it. That's the sexy part. It's the part that you sell. But that's the last part that you want to work on. So in this workshop, we talk about the big mistake and how to create products that sell everything, like to, the whole system. I show you the whole model of how I run my seven-figure business. It's all inside this workshop because it's you need to know this. <laughs> you, and I want you to start this business this year. So it's absolutely free. It, there's so much more. It covers exact tools that I'm using, tools that you can use to run your online business, like what to use, how to use it, what to do when, best practices, literal breakdowns of other examples of who's doing it well. It's all inside this workshop and it's free. I want you to go watch it. So to get to it, and I don't know where you're listening to this, but to get to it, just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop. Okay, very simple, grahamcochran.com slash workshop and watch it. And then even better than watching it, take notes. And then even better than taking notes, be one of the few people that actually put it into practice. If you follow the steps in that workshop, you can start to build your online business that will generate income for you. $1,000 a month, very doable. 30 minutes a day, 
Yeah, that's three hours a week. If you're committing to three hours a week of doing what I tell you to do in this workshop, you can build an online business. It's slow. I know. But guess what? You're leveraging your day job right now. You're busy. Now, if you're like me and you got fired or you got let go because the company ran out of money, hey, you've got more time. So do more than 30 minutes. You'll be able to grow it faster. But the point is you can do it even if you're busy. So I want you to be able to check that out. It's absolutely free as my gift to you. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop. And if you've been enjoying this podcast so far, would you do me one final favor? I'm asking a lot of you, but I think it's fair if you found any value out of this. Would you go to iTunes and leave me a review? Leave me a review on the show so that I know you're listening, so that I can do more. I can keep putting these episodes out. Because if you don't care, I've got other things I could be doing like eating more chips and salsa and watching Star Wars on repeat. And not just watching Star Wars, I'm talking about watching the behind the scenes, all the bonus features, and then watching the movie again with the commentary turned on from the director and the producer, and then watching the movie straight up again just to watch it. And not just for one, but for all eight that already exist, plus the spinoffs. Even Solo, which is probably the worst of the two spinoffs, but we won't go there. It was still a cool movie. Yeah, I could be doing that <laughs> instead of doing this podcast. But I'm trying to really help you. I'm trying to really help you. And I want to motivate you because an online business that changed my life, I know it can change yours. That's it for today, my friend. Thanks for listening. Go out there, build an online business you love so that you can work less, so that you can ultimately live and give more because I know that's what you were made to do. Appreciate you. Honored to spend some time with you. I'll see you on another episode real soon.